All right, folks, this has to be a uh, driving one because, you know, I got to multitask. But when we left off last, I was telling you about surgeries one, two, and three. Sorry, I'm sweating, but it's 103 in Antelope Valley. I'm leaving the hospital from taking labs. They have to see if my knee is infected. Um... I wanted them to amputate it, but there's been some developments that we'll talk about later. So now they're going to do a total revision of my right leg tumor prosthesis because it's no longer just the knee. Uh, and we'll get to that, too. So you got to hold your horses for that. And those of you that know the story, don't spoil it for the rest of the people. So last time we talked, we were at uh, surgery number three. Surgery number three, they took the metal out of my knee off of my knee, um, which left my knee bone on bone. So I had some, some staple holes that wouldn't, wouldn't heal. I didn't know what it was at the time, but now I know it's a sign of infection when something doesn't heal after a surgery. Uh, but it was, this is my first surgery started with this knee. So I'm three surgeries in and I don't really know what's going on, but I'm tired of having problems with it anyway. They take the metal out and just close my knee back up, which leaves my knee bone on bone because if you know, the meniscus is like a disc in between the joint. Um, it holds it together, I'll say, but I don't know if that's the truth. Maybe it's just padding and uh, I tore that and there's no way to replace that. So they just take it out or they cut whatever pieces off. Well, I didn't have a meniscus because I tore mine completely off. I tore my knee in half. My knee was separated. So, um, I, after surgery number three, I was bone on bone. It hurt like hell. You know what it felt like? It felt like the two parts of my knee had metal nails in between it. So that when I stood on my leg or when I tried to walk on it, it felt like the, the two joints of my uh, femur and my tibia, it felt like they were there were metal nails in between there. That's the best way I can describe it. So every step hurt like that um, all the time. So those of you that knew me during that time, this would be year, uh, this is 2000. So 2010 is surgeries one, two, and three, Ju June, August, and October. And then surgeries four, five, and six are 2011, March, April, and May. But anyway, back to the story. So I'm bone on bone and the doctor decides that the best thing to do for this knee is to do what they call a manipulation under anesthesia. So they're gonna put me to sleep, they're gonna bend my knee to my ear, and then hopefully when I come out of the sleep because they've bent it or broke it or whatever, and I'll tell you why I said that later, um, they will, uh, they, you know, I should be able to bend it. Well, first of all, when I came to, that shit hurt so bad. So now, there were not only nails between my knee, but the nails were on fire between my knee. Um, but the doctor kept saying, you know, you need to bend it. You need to walk on it. The reason why it hurts so bad is because you won't walk on it. You're babying it. You're bending it. And it had my lovely ex-wife, who some of you know, uh, treating me like a big old punk. The doctor says you need to walk. You know, why are you being a punk? Get up and walk on it. I'm like, because it feels like burning nails are in there. Something is wrong right uh so we go back to the doctor to get my now this was a, a manipulation usually doesn't require somebody to cut into you um but i had staples so i had been cut for some reason they cut me in this manipulation and i didn't know why and at the time i didn't know to ask why because i didn't learn that a manipulation was just bending your knee to your ear uh until some years later but anyway i go to get the staples taken out and he takes the staples out in the same spot that wouldn't heal before. They tried to like cover it up, like pull the skin together and put that sick skin inside the, the wound. But that didn't work. So, I mean, it worked. They, he was taking the staples out and it kind of unfolded a little bit, just a little. And so uh, to celebrate, because uh, hopefully I'll be walking in a few days. You know, when you have staples, you can't put pressure on it or none of that. So I'd be walking in a few days and um, 
I was happy, so let's go celebrate. You know, let's stop at the 7-Eleven, get some cash, and then go to happy hour to celebrate. Well, while my ex-wife was in the 7-Eleven, my thigh busted open. Busted open, just pop open, uh, and some pus started coming out. And the pus smelled like death. It smelled like something died. And so I went into shock. So when my ex-wife came back from the ATM, she asked me, what's wrong with you? Because I was just kind of sitting there staring at my leg and I had my pants leg down. I knew what happened because it was my body. So I knew it popped open and I knew the pus was coming out because it was soaking my leg. But for her, I lifted up the, the leg of the pants leg, the shorts, the leg of my shorts, and she gasped. And so you know we're she's like I couldn't talk so she's like I'm gonna take you back to the hospital I mean to the doctor so we go back to the doctor's office and I drip pus and blood everywhere and uh, so in the when I get to the office they wrap my leg up with um, with some gauze and let the gauze soak up the blood and pus and stuff and when I went back to the doctor finally he cut open the gauze and opened it and the doctor gasped so if you could imagine that I thought that doctors see a lot of shit, you know, a lot of stuff happens to people. So doctors should not gasp when they see things. I don't think that's a good practice for a doctor. But when he gasped, that confirmed for me that I was dying. It confirmed for me that he saw something that he had never seen before and that I was going to die tonight. And uh, it was a serious thought, you know, Uh, he tells us go straight to the emergency room when he gets done. and He proceeded to push about a quart of pus out of my leg um pushed it out like a like dr pimple popper but imagine if the pimple is a gash in your leg going down to the bone that uh was about three or four inches so anyway i started making reconciliations with the fact that i'm dying uh we have to drive he wants us to go to the emergency room in sherman oak so i lived in palmdale and Sherman Oaks is probably an hour away or a little over an hour away. So we get to Sherman Oaks. Uh, and, and by the way, can I say that I don't know the laws for talking shit about a company, but Sherman Oaks Hospital, I walked in there. And now that I know that I had an infection and I'll let you know when I talk about the next surgery, what the infection was and all of that. But they took no precautions. My my they laid me in the hallway on what was a dirty bed somebody had just gotten out of it all the dude did was change the sheet he didn't um wipe it down or none of that they laid me on this what i consider a dirty bed because some sick emergency room patient was just on it um they allowed my leg to drain so it not only dripped all over that bed it dripped all on the floor i'm pretty sure that that person probably didn't uh wipe it off that well when I got up off of it because you know they weren't doing a good job anyway and um then I saw how people got infections because I don't know if I mentioned but my first surgery was at Sherman Oaks and that's where the the surgery got infected at Sherman Oaks so I'm paying a lot of attention to Sherman Oaks right now in the emergency room because I'm realizing that this is infection my leg is infected so anyway They rolled me back and pretty much put me to sleep. And the next time I woke up was after surgery number five, which we will talk about next time when I'm not driving and can focus. Um, But we're getting there, folks. We're almost caught up. Uh, Just, you know, eight more to go. All right. Till the next time. Like and subscribe.